Okay, how's everybody doing? Okay, so with this uh, layout summary, I just want to give uh, people, most notably uh, the latest subscribers, a brief uh, overview of uh, the layout, the Glover Road Diorama. Just maybe explain a little bit about it, because I know it's tough to know about it if you just sort of stumble across the channel without going through all the content. You know, there's quite a bit there. So let me just start then with when I began this layout over a year ago, there was it was just this frame that I had, which is made from three quarter inch plywood. I, I like to use plywood when I build my frameworks. And what I did was is I, I I had one sound equipped locomotive, I think, or two, I can't remember now, but and I wanted to just lay down a track on an angle, as you see, just offset a little bit and have the ability to MU two six axle locomotives on almost every position of the track with a runaround. So there was the siding here, which was just an afterthought, but I had the main line here and then the sort of branch line idea uh, with the runaround here and then the main tail and then the two foot staging I added on later. Never even thought about that at the time. So once I had that down and then I wired it, like glued it all down, ballasted it, and wired it, I decided that, okay, what can I do with this? And part of the, the, you know, the motivation was, is I had all these photographs, like moments over the last 25, 30 years of just rail fanning, you know, that I had. And I started to go through them all and I thought, wow, I remember that, I remember that. And so I wanted to compress and combine all those kind of general uh, moments uh, within eight feet by 16 inches and it kind of began with this grain elevator which is a prototype uh, that I scratch built of the Glover Road grain elevator on the corner of Crush Crescent as you see here and Glover Road so this is actually prototypical this photo is right from the location this uh, it looks a lot like this the track plans a bit different and the road, like the main intersection was just too large uh, to model. Even the grain elevator, I couldn't do the, the rear three bins, but I did the original bin and the add-on one at the front. So this is all prototypically correct that I scratch built from uh, drawings and photographs. And then the photograph of Crush Crescent. So this is a really good representation of the actual prototype. So I had that in place with this space. So I had to force things in and then I, uh, built the blue building off to the right there that I discussed earlier and then I decided that I would add an industry here and here and I built this building down here based on the uh, BC rail shops in North Vancouver. I just liked it and then this building was uh, inspired by a building I saw in New West or I think it was somewhere on there but like the color really grabbed me and then this this bridge facade was based on the bridge I used to play under as a kid down at the shops in a BC Hydro days, where there was a Y where it went underneath like this. So this is semi-prototypical, but I had to use artistic license to put this in place. And then the Dairy Queen, which where everybody hung around in the 60s and 70s, and the yard office here. And I just, and then the tree, like I just evolved the scene progressively from left to right to what it is now. And I have to say, uh, I'm very satisfied and very pleased with the way it turned out. And I got to give credit and due to the community as well that's developed around the channel, because all of you have been so inspirational. Your, your compliments have been over the top. I mean, sometimes they're hard to handle, but, um, you know, just encouraging me and, uh, you know, uh, you know, trying to maintain my humility as well uh, as part of the community, realizing that we're all at different levels. Part of the reason of this channel is too, is I want to encourage everybody else to maybe relook at the hobby in a smaller footprint. You know, that maybe you've overstretched yourself. You know, I mean, I've done it in the past and I certainly don't plan on it going there ever again. And I really like what I've been able to achieve here. Like, like even with the design, this diorama shadow box like effect. Like even the, the, you know, the box cabinet effect enhances the sound of the locomotives, which has improved dramatically. The speaker technology, the sound decoders available like TCS, Tsunami 2, and ESU Loke Sound version 5. The quality of the locomotives, the ability, the motor control, how smooth and slow they run. I mean, you can really create an immersive 
rail fanning railroad on a small footprint. This is the evidence, right? I've proven it. I've shown all of you in a year that this can be done. Uh, you can spend longer at it. I mean, I really pushed hard, but that's part and due to all my experience in film and theater and stuff. I know how to cut corners and I know how to press in and get things done. But, you know, then there's been the video and, and oh, man, that's been probably, I would say 60% of the time, 50% is video and post-production. But it's been a really good experience for me and I'm sure it has for all of you. Um, I know there's details that have mentioned about uh, lighting and like, you know, for example, wires on the poles. Uh, are you going to put servos and add the lights on the crossing? Are you going to put lights on the building? You know, that's all things that I'm going to do at the end from a production point of view. Like I'm not going to put wires on the poles and then yank them down while I'm reaching in with a camera or a lighter because I know it'll happen. So that's why I haven't done that yet. So yes, all the things that you comment on and, and observe and would like to see are probably coming. But now that's kind of putting the icing on the cake now. Like I get to enjoy that. I'll document some of it. But now it's stuff where I can kind of sit back and rest a little bit too because I am a little bit tired. Just a little bit. Um, so yeah, so you know, eight feet by 16 inches, uh, you can create a lot of depth as you can see. Uh, like even the backdrop photo here, as reluctant as I was to do it, I'm glad I did it now. Uh, you know, in response to a lot of comments, you know, I, I, it, it, it works. You know, it sort of works. It, like from this angle especially, you can really see how everything sort of ties in nicely. And um, I don't know what else to say other than I get this reward, you know, now where um, you can know what it's like to finish a layout when you build a small one. And it feels really cool. And then you can just relax after a hard day's work eventually and tweak minor things. Just have fun with it. Run your favorite locomotive. Add one or two to the roster that you already have. Uh, you know, change up the period a bit if you want. You know, uh, are there things on this layout I would have done differently? Sure. But you have to settle for it eventually. you got to just stick with it and see it through. And it's very important to see it through, too. And you can do it with a small layout like this. Because you're compressing all the skills into one small footprint. Like, you could cover all the NMRA certificates on this layout. It meets the square footage. It's 16 by 8 feet, so it's 8 square feet. Or four, is it four square feet or eight? Anyway, I can't remember. Uh, and the buildings, uh, locomotive scenery, track, it's it can all be encompassed on a small project like this if you're into that. Um, I don't need the certificates personally, um, but you know, for those of you that are thinking about it, uh, you can do it all and achieve all those accomplishments and certificates uh, on a small shelf layout like this. Okay, and then you get a really nice little movable gem at the end of it, right? Something you're kind of proud of and something you can really enjoy and, and keep evolving if you really want to, you know. So thanks again to everyone. A big shout out to all the other channels too. Uh, you know, uh, you know who you are. Um, you know, you've been a great encouragement to me as well. Thank you for all the subscribers. Uh, you know, like uh, all the larger subscribers as well that, that have subbed to the channel. Uh, I try to be fair, but I also want to criticize to reform, to make the hobby better for everyone. And it's not because I'm against any particular product. It's just, you know, we need to have criticism in our society because that's what makes us better. It makes the whole community and society better. Right? So... Yeah, uh, like I say, um, what a great genre, the shelf layout. The immersive little railroad that we can all do. We're all capable of doing it. Okay, so thanks for tuning in. Feel free to subscribe because I uh, this isn't the end. This is just another beginning. I'm going to continue with this layout. I have other plans in store as well. And I want you to be able to glean something from that and enjoy it as well okay thanks for tuning in i hope you have a great day